You know the drill. Start that spring that I.O. Give your application a group ID and an artifact ID. Choose Java 17 or later because it's the right thing to do. And also, since it's the new baseline, add your dependencies. Here we're using Spring Data JDBC, PostgreSQL, both the reactive and servlet-based web stacks, the actuator observability module, and Prometheus and Zipkin support, GraphQL support, and GraalVM native image support. Download the zip file, open it in, in your IDE, Our application is going to require some infrastructure. PostgreSQL, Zipkin, Prometheus for a start. Run that with Docker Compose up. Now let's log into PostgreSQL and create our customer table and then install some records in the database. We've got eight amazing records, which is still way less than Quinn Beyonce. Anyway, moving on. We need to point our application to our SQL database, so bring up application.properties and make some changes. Next up, we're going to need to write some code to connect to our PostgreSQL database. Spring Boot has the widest selection of integrations for SQL and NoSQL data stores alike, like MongoDB, Couchbase, Neo4j, Redis, etc. Easy CRUD and dynamic finder methods are a line or two with just simple Spring Data repositories. And just look at that entity. Records. Isn't that nice? Look, Ma, no Lombok. Another nice feature of Spring Boot 3 is that it requires Java 17. I'm using Java 17 and GraalVM. Here's my SDK man installation. We need to export our service to the network. What could go wrong? Don't answer that. Let's build a controller. Remember, Spring controllers are multi-paradigm. It's the same annotation whether you're building MVC forms and HTML views, REST style endpoints, RSocket endpoints, GraphQL services, SOAP endpoints, WebSockets, etc. Let's just build a simple REST style HTTP endpoint. The HTTP endpoint just returns all the customer data when asked. Noise. Next, we're going to build a GraphQL controller endpoint. To get started, we'll need to define some schema in a file called source main resources GraphQL schema at GraphQLS, describing which queries, mutations, and subscriptions our application supports. Just as before, we will describe a controller handler method that delegates to the repository to do most of the heavy lifting here. A controller is just a glue code adapting network requests to your business logic after all. Typically, you'd probably put the GraphQL and REST controller handler methods in separate controller classes, but I won't tell if you won't. Spring GraphQL embeds a handy GraphQL client called Graphical, which is a great way to work with your endpoints before you've actually stood up an actual, honest to goodness, JavaScript or Android or iOS client to talk to your backend service. Restart the, the app and visit the Graphical endpoint. Look at that Auto completion. That's the schema that we wrote earlier, paying dividends that you'd otherwise have to invest in things like Swagger to get for plain old HTTP or REST endpoints. All these Spring Boot users, who we're ironically calling customers in this example, have a lot of free time on their hands. Their code's already in production doing the right thing because they're using Spring Boot 3. Let's give them something to do. We'll pull in data from a separate HTTP API with some suggestions as to what they might do if they're bored. Building an HTTP client is normally no fun, but Spring Boot 3 features a declarative client mechanism. You just provide an interface and it'll flesh out the rest for you. This works for HTTP and ARC socket based services right now. Building this client becomes just a few lines of actual business concern and then just a bit of configuration to wire up the declarative client. Update the schema with a new field, suggested activity, and a new type activity. Restart the app and confirm that the activity is now a seamless part of the object graph that's returned from the endpoint. Thanks, GraphQL. In production, nobody can hear your application scream. You need to instrument it. And Spring Boot's actuator ships out of the box with a number of handy endpoints, including a health endpoint, Kubernetes probes, and metrics. The metric support is provided by the Micrometer project, which can forward the metrics to the likes of Prometheus, a common time series database in the Kubernetes space, in Spring Boot 3, the Micrometer project also supports distributed tracing and a new unified observation API so that we can collect trace information and forward it to infrastructure like OpenZipkin. For our demonstration, we'll turn on all actuator endpoints. I've specified a few properties to enable Kubernetes probes and to get 100% of our traces sampled and to do a few other things. Restart the application, visit the health endpoint. You'll see that it's returning some interesting JSON, but also the appropriate status codes. Visit the metrics endpoint. You can see, for example, how many HTTP requests have been made to a particular endpoint and visit some endpoints to drive some traffic and then refresh the HTTP server requests metric and you'll see more reflected in the output. Visit Prometheus, which we also have still running in the background uh, in Docker Compose over on port 9090 and you can query the data being emitted from our Spring Boot application. This is ideal for alerting and planning. Visit Zipkin over on port 9411 to see the distributed trace information related to the application. Each trace shows the step-by-step -step journey of the requests going through the system. I think we're ready for production, the final frontier. Let's talk about packaging. 
You can use the build pack support long present in Spring Boot to build a Docker image. I also want to take advantage of the new Gravium AOT na native image support in Spring Boot 3 to build a super optimized native image. The application will start up in about a tenth of a second or so and run with a little more than 100 megabytes of RAM, a huge win in a serverless or general cloud environment where apps are metered and expensive. Imagine shaving giant chunks of your cloud bill without having to abandon languages and lessons learned. You can CD into the build directory and find the, the main image that you just built and launch it as you would any other binary. Or you can use the handy Gradle task for a wee lazy few called Gradle W Native Run. And with that, our application is up and running and in production in record time.